All right. Well, Jam Shirajman, PhD, the Chief Science Officer of the FSHD Society, is waiting in the wings. So I'm going to bring him in. He's got some exciting stuff to tell us about the work that he's been doing as our Chief Science Officer and just uh, give us a rundown of some of the stuff that's happening in the field. At one point, we had a cool little snazzy uh, Did we? Theme song intro we would play for Jamsheet. I don't know where it went, but. <laughs> oh, oh, man, I can find it. I bet I have something. <laughs> Jamming with Jamsheet. Jamming with Jamsheet. Can't let you take yourself too seriously, Jay. I mean, you the work you can do is serious. Yeah. I mean, the you work you do it. is serious. But right. The work, <laughs> yes, I like that. And you know what? It's like we can, I totally see just jazz lounge every time I see Jamsheet. <laughs> You know, I keep I, very, very that intelligent. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to let hey. you guys chat it up while I work on the next guest. All right. Jeff thanks, G. Lee. Thank you. I want to thank both of you for uh, doing this incredible program. Um, really incredible. I, I've been trying to get some work done and I'm listening and kind of keep getting pulled into the discussions. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so my work productivity is going down because of it, but it's a, for a good cause. And I also want to thank all of the participants, everybody that's come on. I've learned things from everybody that's been on so far. I've, I've had to, I've had some calls. Unfortunately, I've missed a few of the presentations, but uh, they've been fantastic. And of course, thank you to everybody making donations and contributions. Um, to, to fund the next set of activities we'll be taking on in 2023. So I uh, really appreciate that. So you're kind of segueing there. Next, <laughs> Am next I doing activity. your job for you? <laughs> no. Hey, man. You know, I mean, I like guests that come in you know, locked and loaded. That's been all of them so far today. You know, they got something to say. They got their, they got their hit list of what they want to talk about for sure. And, and I know you don't ever disappoint in that regard. Jam sheet, you know, and they're not here to listen to me only. You know, they're more here. People are, are, are want to hear information, right? And and you're and you're and you are the deliverer of such great information. Uh, well, I, I'd I'm happy to be the conduit of, of yes. uh, this information. And uh, you know, I, I I'd like to kind of recap on on 2022. I think hey. coming out of the COVID pandemic, uh, we we've had a really stellar year. I think there's been a lot of amazing things happening. So you know. You attended the International Research Congress okay. and the Patient Connect meeting in Orlando in, in June. This was the we finally were able to get back together as an in-person meeting, and it was really obvious that people were really hungry to get back together to meet up in person. And the same thing, everybody, both the scientists, the patient community, everybody was really eager. Those were really successful meetings, um, and we're looking to continue on that and. 2023, we'll be holding uh, the IRC in Milan uh, in June again. So this is going to be really exciting. And hopefully we'll get more of our European colleagues and researchers being able to attend that. Um, you know, we've had, heard several people already talk about it, but you know, we have the first phase three clinical trial in FSHD that's got started this year. This is Fulcrum's losmapamol trial, the REACH trial. Th this is really incredible. Uh, I was listening to Jack mentioning, you know, four years ago, um, there had been, you know, there were, four years ago, uh, I think there had been a couple of studies in FSHD, a couple of trials. Uh, I think the Wyeth trial, ATIRE, and then um, uh, Acceleron ran a trial, I think it started in 2019. So those were like, you know, phase one, two, phase two studies. Um, but this is really the first time we're going for a drug that's passed all the criteria and they're now looking to see if it's efficacious and that that's really something um, and we've also heard from a number of different companies who are poised to start uh, clinical trials very soon so I heard Alex talk about uh, from Epic Bio give a presentation about their aggressively moving their program forward Roche we heard from uh, Catherine Wagner who, you know, phenomenal clinician, research scientist, actually, she's an MD, PhD, uh, and has moved on to Roche and getting Roche interested in the space. That's really fantastic. And they have a, a trial uh, that they're going to start soon. Um, and then Avidity, of course, uh, Lisa Ackerman was on. Uh, that, that's really fantastic. So, um, and then, you know, to get people ready for the trials, um, we launched uh, what we call Test FSHD which is a genetic testing program that is a, a 
clinically validated genetic testing that was uh, co-funded um, by a lot of the pharmaceuticals in the space. So um, they want to make sure that you know people who want to volunteer for trials are eligible and they have that genetic testing done. We all know how challenging it is to not only get insurance companies to pay for it, but self-pay options are it's not only expensive, but it's sometimes quite difficult to even get. Uh, you need to get a medical referral. So we set up this program and we launched it in April. Uh, it was a pilot program for 150 people um, that was fully sponsored. And uh, we finished, I think, in November 1st. Uh, we're still obtaining some results. And then once we have all of the test results in, we'll be able to go back to the pharmaceutical companies and ask them if they want to continue this. This was really a fastest way of getting people the genetic testing they need to be eligible for uh, upcoming clinical trials. And as more trials um, you know, get lined up, more and more people will uh, will need more and more volunteers. So anything we can do to lower that hurdle for people to participate, I think, is a win-win for everyone. Yeah, there's, a, there's 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 still a lot of work to do when it comes to that, right? Getting more participants and and lining up the volunteers, as you mentioned, we kind of been talking about that throughout throughout the day. Yeah, it's a little bit of a well large hurdle, right? And we really want to avoid it if all possible. Yeah, and I thought that, you know, for instance, my naive thinking was that, oh, well, the U.S. may have a more complicated system because insurance may not want to pay for it. But in Europe, everybody gets genetic testing. Everybody gets access to these things. And it turns out that's not necessarily true. Uh, mm -hmm. Genetic testing for FSHD is complicated. Many countries don't have their own facilities to do genetic testing, and so it's not available. Um, those who do, they may have one or two centers that provide genetic testing and quite often they're, they're, they just can't keep up with demand or uh, it's slow to, to the, for the process to, to get established. So, you know, we can probably uh, work with those groups as well and see how we can help them and streamline them. And June, I, I heard June mention, you know, the World Alliance and how a lot of these activities in some countries is just managed by one or two volunteers and they can't possibly do everything on their own. So if we can help them, guide them, uh, or find out what they need, that would probably be really useful. And hopefully that will make an impact. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cause I know, yeah, this, this um, has, has been growing even to Australia. I remember we met someone from Australia that came to uh, that event in June, the uh, connect conference. So you're right. I mean, there's, there's definitely more interest, but those are smaller groups. They need a lot more support. And um, yeah, so, um, you know, a lot of interesting things. And, you know, I've heard Lee talked about how important this fundraising activity is. Uh, it, it really is. I mean, the, the money that's raised kind of goes towards funding um, these activities like test FSHD, but we also still support a lot of the basic research. Um, this last round of grants that uh, we just reviewed, there were a lot of really good uh, proposals in there. And, um, you know, we had somewhat limited funding, so we thankfully were able to reach out to some other uh, funding agencies and get them to see if they were interested in helping us co-fund them. And thankfully, they stepped up and helped out. But there's still a couple of grants that I would love to see get funded. I think they could have a, a broader impact on uh, clinical trial design, on genetic testing, global genetic testing, and, and uh, imaging initiatives and things like that. So... Uh, the funding is really critical for supporting those kind of activities. How many uh, 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 grants came through to review? Uh, this last cycle, I think we had uh, about 15. Um, and um, I'd like to, I think four or five of them were, I should have looked at those stats beforehand. That's a, <laughs> Sorry. That's a, <laughs> uh, I think four or five of them were resubmissions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know one or two of them, uh, of the resubmissions, um, the SAB liked them, the Scientific Advisory Board liked them for the first time around, but they said, you know, make it bigger, make it broader. So it, it's got, as opposed to doing a small grant, do something bolder. And they came back. Unfortunately, we didn't have the budget to support uh, them. So we're looking now for partners to help us 
uh, take these forward. One of them, for instance, is uh, something I'd love to see done is we heard, uh, I think Michaela uh, early on today talked about the MOVE and MOVE Plus study. Yeah. So um, that's a natural history study looking at disease progression, and it's mostly focusing on adults. Uh, they are open to uh, taking um, adolescent and, and children in the study, but the, the, a lot of the readouts are not specifically designed for children. And so we would we have a proposal to look for uh, basically it's a move plus like study without the muscle biopsy uh, for children. It has a, a more frequent uh, uh, visits. So um, this is something that I think would really help the early onset group. Yeah. It would be great to track that uh, that population. Um, and there. Are, We've in the past supported a study in Australia that's an uh, imaging component uh, in adolescent children and, um, I'm sorry, in, in adolescents. And so um, we'd love to be able to expand that to multiple sites and do something a little bit more comprehensive. Um, so we'll be reaching out to some of the pharma companies who are interested in different populations, seeing if they are willing to sponsor this project. Wow, that's a, that's a very exciting, uh, especially when you're talking about uh, some of these projects that have to do with children, with that, with adolescent that age group, that's definitely yeah. something we're trying to target. Right, as a community, be a little more aware of the early onset chapter, even that has been started and so forth. So it's nice to see that push that direction. Yes, and it, it's it's a, a combined thing, right? So you have um, the research has to happen, the uh, patient community has to be involved uh, and provide feedback. So it's it's really an integrated system and it requires a lot of collaborations. Uh, collaborations amongst the researchers because um, adolescent cases are fairly rare. So you need to have a, a broad network of clinicians that are able and willing to participate. Uh, you need the patient community to be aware that this is happening. Um, and you need the pharmaceutical companies um, to hopefully, you know, see this as a value proposition and and provide support for it. So sounds like you got your hands full then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it keeps uh, uh, keeps me out of trouble and minimizes the amounts of shenanigans I'm involved in. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for a good cause. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so, you know, moving forward you know, for next year, I think some of our big um, projects, uh, June already mentioned the true cost of FSHD research. We had stellar responses, um, but now we have all this data and we thought it would be easy to analyze. But um, as June said, we have to recruit the big gun statisticians to help us really filter through the data. Um, so this is gonna be one of the major tasks that we're gonna engage in, in early 2023. We're looking to really have the results and publications ready probably by mid-year. Um, and then um, a lot of the pharmaceutical companies are also running their own uh, true cost studies, but they're more limited because they were just using insurance data. Um, we have the only study that actually has um, responses from the population, from the patient population. And the, the um, that's really firsthand knowledge you know, of, of how much money they're spending. And it touches on that really important indirect cost. You can track insurance, you know, reclaims uh, charges and get a very accurate number, but that's only a fraction of the cost that people incur during uh, the progression of their disease. So, right, yeah, um, and that's insurance on certain amounts of things, right? That's only a fraction or a small piece of this. This is, I mean, talk about out-of-pocket expense, even on changing your home, and I mean, all these other expenses that go beyond whatever insurance would cover. Yeah, exactly, and that's really important to capture because for insurance companies to consider reimbursement of a drug that might be expensive, um, they need to know what it's really costing society as a whole um, without it. And um, you really need to take all of those indirect costs into account. They, they are, you know, um, they're yeah, not know. negligible. They're, they're right. really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's that. And then, of course, we're still continuing to do some biomarker work. Um, and um, one of the interesting... Uh, development, I think, has been with imaging. I think uh, MRI have looked really promising, uh, and there's been a lot of 
smaller studies. I think the most comprehensive imaging studies probably have been done by Fulcrum during their phase two study. Uh, but there are other groups that have been doing a lot of imaging, like the Wellstone in Seattle. Uh, there's groups in Europe that are doing imaging. And of course, at Kennedy Krieger, Dr. Doris Leong has done a very comprehensive longitudinal study. And so, you know, everybody has a little bit of data and it would be really great if we could figure out a way of pulling all the data that people have collected and doing a, a comprehensive analysis. So this is a kind of consortium that I'm looking forward to build next year um, with the academic community that's been doing this, as well as uh, input from the pharmaceutical companies and some of the imaging uh, technology developers um, to see can all these images help us develop new biomarkers and tools that could be used in clinical trials to either shorten the trial or to make them more effective? So um, it's a it's a very complex field. Uh, uh, imaging is is has a lot of physics and anatomy, and uh, uh, that's not my strength. But thankfully, there are a lot of um, experts in the field who are interested, and they are starting to collaborate together. So uh, that's just I think it. Without even our involvement, it might happen on its own, but hopefully we can just get involved enough to to speed it up a little bit. Nice, nice. Yeah. Any, any anything else then in store for like 2023 before we let you go? Make sure I don't want to leave any stone unturned here, Jam. She's we have your <laughs> undivided attention for this time. Oh. Uh, well, you know, we're going to be doing more more grants and of course uh, collaborating with as many groups as possible. I, I'm been really delighted at seeing so many pharmaceutical company, companies announce that they're working on FSHD. Quite often, uh, we're in discussion with them uh, under confidentiality agreement. They reach out and they're thinking about FSHD and they ask about who can we talk to about um, the biology of the disease, what resources are available. And, um, and um, you know, it's um, absolutely amazing that you know, in a matter of months, sometimes they kind of publicly announce that they have a program and they're moving things along. So oh, that is exciting. It moves fast. It does. And it's just fantastic to, to see and to be part of. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jam Sheed, for being here. Oh, hey, hey Jay. <laughs> Hi. The work he does is important. So um, we're glad you're part of the team, my friend. Yeah, he's a busy Thank you man. very much. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, really, been I've been enjoying this. You really, you've done an amazing job so far. It's, it's amazing. Oh, thank you. It's thank pretty you awesome. Much. Pretty great day. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, we got our next guest in the waiting room. So Jay, I'm go get some work done. Yeah. Yes. You got so time <laughs> on the clock, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. All right. See you in the next meeting. Bye. Bye. So I got to tell you, he's a great guy. And, you know, this organization did not have a chief science officer until we went and found Jamsheed. And, and those conversations that he has and the people that he brings together around the table and the thought processes that we foster are just, they're really important. And he mentioned a little bit the, um, the uh, uh, it just fell out of my head. Uh, grants? <laughs> the, no, the, the research... Uh, the, oh, the uh, true cost of FS. Oh, oh, the, the oh, now I'm looking like the an idiot. Connect conference, the, the, not the, no, the international the research country. Yes, the IRC. Oh my god, ah, this is where I need. I'm starting to look haggard. Somebody hand me you're, a Snickers. You're okay? losing it. Yeah, it's a Snickers moment. Yes, the International Research Congress. That is something that we sometimes gloss over and go, oh, we're doing this meeting, and people don't really understand the incredible value of that meeting. It is sort of revered among all the researchers and people in the field to say this is one of the best ones they've ever come to. And to provide this collaborative experience for not just pharmaceutical companies, but for academic researchers, for those that are just starting up, we provide scholarships to get folks who, if their academic organization can't afford to send them, or they're a young researcher that doesn't have the funds to get there, but they're interested in FSHD, we cover and we get people there. Right. And that's where magic happens. They're there together, listening to presentations and sharing their findings, but then just discussing with each other, this meeting of the minds over lunch and at dinner. And um, lots of progress happens because of those conversations those people being brought together around the table and those conversations being facilitated. Um, right. That couldn't happen 
if the FSHD Society wasn't putting on the conference, right, the Research Congress. And it's important that we get all these minds together because it's going to take all of them sharing and collaborating and group thinking to to find the solutions and to you know crack the nut and there are things that have happened where it's like i've got this uh therapy i don't quite know how to deliver it well i've got a delivery mechanism i need something you know they those kinds of things happen the at the international research congress yeah. and and um that's one of the things that people fund when they support the FSHD Society, that's one of the things that we fund. And, you know, we were just discussing some of the logistics the other day and we said, you know what? It needs to be a really good meeting. We ought to be able to cover the cost of those that can't afford to get there that need to be in the room. But we're going to pick the cheaper venue and we're going to pick right. you, you that the money. because it's yeah. not our money. It right. belongs to the patients and we have to be good stewards of it. And so we got to get a big enough space to get all the people in the room. They got to have a place to sleep and food to eat but it doesn't have to be extravagant because that's not what we're here for what we're here for is to foster those conversations that are going to move it all forward and that's that's one of those things i'm so proud of uh that we do that mm -hmm. and it's something that doesn't get a lot of attention but it's about leveraging those connections right. that are going to move things forward it's just taking those yeah those great minds and like eliminating the distractions of other things and putting them right in the same room in the same place and like they just digest right. that type of stuff all day and boom and i you're right i mean the the feedback from them is that they love it they love meeting getting together i mean i've been in a virtual conference um you know and uh, uh about baseball coaching and that doesn't work as great because i got distractions at home and i can only do so much virtual but man, right. when I go there and I'm in it all the time, all day, all night. You get a lot it, done. You make a lot of connections. It's in those white spaces, right? Yes, it's in, it's in the hallways. It's in yes, yes. It's in between. Yeah, that's yes. when the collaboration starts. 